today we're going to talk about how you can set your agents up to potentially help manage more of your office's workflow, giving them more autonomy if desired, and saving you and your admins time. Whether it be setting up or configuring options like automating certain features for or certain areas for them, or giving them access to perform certain functions, or training them to do certain things that they may normally come to you for. Basically, it sets them up for success and you to save time. So just win-win all around. All righty. So let's start by, I'm going to hop over to admin settings and manage users because we can't talk about enabling, with such a negative word, by the way, this is the good enabling, enabling agents to be able to do more without talking about permissions, obviously. So let me hop into a user's account here. Not going to go into detail, but obviously the baseline of what you want to do to be able to allow agents to do, do certain actions in the system is to give them the appropriate permissions, whether you want them to be able to add transactions, upload docs, change statuses, et cetera. You do all of that there. Okay. So that's, you know, baseline. You want to set that up to, to start. But let's talk about some other ways you can allow agents to be responsible for more actions in pipeline. Starting with, let me head over to admin settings again and checklists. So let me open one of these checklists. And the first area I wanted to mention is making sure that you've got your checklists set up to be automatically added to transactions. Since you've got the ability to fully fine tune exactly when checklists get automatically added based on their status, based on what type of transaction they are, which side of the transaction you have, et cetera. Using those three options to really fine tune and craft exactly when checklists get added to transactions is huge because the checklists get added automatically. Agents don't have to wait for admins to add that. So they can hit the ground running as soon as certain milestones or statuses or whatever your criteria is get reached for a transaction without having to wait on an admin, okay? So win-win again, all around, and the admins don't need to add them, nor the agents, and the agents can get started without any intervention. Alrighty, so that's the first area. And then while we're on checklists here, I wanted to mention also that you've got the ability to allow agents to change the due dates of certain tasks when it's appropriate, right? So in this case, if it's appropriate, for example, probably not, but for the agent to be able to change the due date of the lead-based paint disclosure, you can click that. It's already clicked. Let's say we're unclicked or unchecked. I could click that so that that agent is able to change that due date on that particular task. Okay. And then from an agent's perspective, let me open up an agent's window here. From an agent's perspective, you can see here for that lead-based, I've got the ability to change the due date just like you guys can, just like admins can, right? So I can click it. I can still do a, a relative due date or an absolute due date if I'm an agent. I won't be able to do it for those tasks where I, it, it has not been specified that an agent can change the due date. Okay, so it gives them that autonomy. All righty. Okay. Next, I wanted to mention agent checking tasks. So let me open that agent's window back up. I, again, logged in as an agent here. When I, as an agent, check a task, it will mark that task as agent checked, right? Right, so if I check it, it gets this little yellow check mark that is intended to indicate to an admin that I've completed my part. So from an agent's perspective, if I've checked this, and this is automatic, any agent who checks a, a, a past checkbox will get an agent check. There's nothing you need to do to set that up. But again, from my perspective as an agent, once I've checked that off, that removes that from my vision, from my view, right? It re removes it from those reminder types of things that, I, that I'll get to, to let me know that a, a task still needs to be done. I'll still see it on the checklist here uh, of a transaction and I will have my agent check. So I can ignore it in that case. I can see that I've done my part. But also if I go to the tasks page, which I'm going to open in a separate tab here, it will no longer appear on my task page because again, I've checked it to indicate that I've done my part. Also, when I get a reminder email, the daily reminder email, it won't appear on there either. So it allows me as an agent to remove, remove it from my, from my view, okay? For you as an admin, let me go back to the admin's view here. For you as an admin, if you were to go to the tasks page here, which I'm gonna open in a separate tab, if you go to the tasks page and say, 
filter on agent checked tasks. I, as an admin, get a nice clean view of all of those tasks that agents have indicated they've completed their part, right? So this is a perfect jumping off point for me. It's in the morning or whenever I'm, I'm starting to go look at tasks that are completed or ready for my view to look at them from this nice clean list. And then I can click through to see it in the context of the rest of the transaction. Right there it is. But again, it's win win because that removes it from their list for them. But for me, it indicates that it's ready for my my actions. If I disagree, I don't think that this person has fulfilled what they said they fulfilled. I can come and hover over that agent check to remove it. Okay. Alrighty. And if I'm fine with it, I could have just checked it off and that would remove that. Let me go to one so that you can see that there. Filter again, right? So on an agent check, if I were to check it off, then I it would fully check it. And then it then it is fully complete. Okay. And again, automatic. If I'm an admin and I check it off, that's what happen, happens just as though when the just as when the agent is checks it off and it gets agent checked. All automatic. Alrighty. And on the subject of checking off tasks, as you can see this little marked out one here, let me head over to an agent's window again. Just like I can indicate to an admin that I've done my part by uh, clicking in the checkbox to make it agent checked, I can also indicate that the item is not applicable. And so you can train your agents to hold down the shift key when they click it. And when they do, they'll have the option to either specify that they've completed it, which would be agent checked, or that it's not applicable. If they do not applicable, it'll, it'll set it as not applicable. And you'll also be able to see those from your task list, meaning when you do the agent check filter. Alrighty. And again, if you don't agree, you can always uncheck that. Okay, quick heads up. In our next release for agents, there will be a little helper text here that lets them know how to do NA so that they, you don't necessarily have to train them on it. It would be good, but you don't have to train them on it. They'll, it'll be visible for them to see there as well. Okay. Next item is under admin settings. Let me head back, back to my admin account here. Go under admin settings. If it's appropriate for agents to be able to set transactions to closed, you can set that here. So here you've got the option to allow agents to change transaction status to close any closed, terminated, or expired status. Again, only if it's appropriate. Many offices do not allow that, but if you do, you can check that option and that would allow agents to set transactions to closed if you've got that not enabled. Okay. And that's the case for all of these. This is only if appropriate, just letting you know the different options. Next, love this page, unassigned, head over to here. As you know, unassigned docs is the area where all uh, docs are waiting to be assigned to transactions. And some people don't realize that they can use it sort of as a method of orchestrating your workflow. And it's all done via the assign permission. We're talking about enabling agents, but um, just as important as enabling them is maybe disabling them or the opposite, right? So this topic that I'm about to talk about is kind of equally as weighty whether we're talking about assigning it or not assigning it. Right. So if, again, back to the unassigned docs page, if a user does not have the assign permission, they cannot get a doc to a transaction. Right. And if the user cannot get a doc to a transaction, meaning they don't have that assigned permission, it's going to land on this page, on this unassigned docs page, until somebody who does have assigned permissions assigns it on through to a transaction. Right. And that means that you can use that bit of knowledge to sort of orchestrate if, let's say, you want admins to put eyes on a doc before it gets to a transaction, just as a QA measure, right? You would just not want to make sure that you don't give the agents or whomever you don't want to get those docs to the transaction because you want an admin to put eyes on it first, the assign permission, right? So that all important assign permission is critical when you're talking about potentially using the unassigned docs area as sort of a holding area for somebody who is more authorized to get a doc to a transaction. All righty. And that includes if, if a user is trying to upload a doc directly to a transaction, meaning they're on the transaction and they click upload doc, if they don't have the assigned permissions, it's going to pop over here until somebody who does sends it on through. Okay. Cool deal. So again, use that assigned permission if you want to enable the users to get docs to the transaction. 
but use it also if you don't want them to get docs to a transaction. Alrighty, next area. Let me start here at transactions. Let me go to a transaction. And this topic is related to message templates. Let me expand my note email area here. If you've used message templates, you already know how amazingly magical they are, right? They store information. Let me do this one here. They store information that you would like to send repeatedly, okay? And likewise, you can include information about the transaction to make the message fully customized via these autofill tags here. Let me do a simpler message here, actually. Let's do, what's your date, right? So I can, I can reference information directly from the transaction, like the buyer name or contact information. These are advanced autofill tags down here, actually, oh, or the close date, et cetera. So using templates, that one's fairly simple. That other one was pretty elaborate. But using these templates can allow you to save a ton of time instead of having to type it each time or come and copy and paste it from somewhere, okay? The way that you can enable agents uh, related to this is, now I can head over to my user profile or personal profile, is that you can share these email templates. So you can create elaborate message templates. You can include autofill tags that pull information from the transactions, et cetera, and then you can share those templates, right? I can share it with everyone. I can share it with other admins. So if I share it with everyone, that's going to share it with admins and agents. And then when I save that template, that means that I, as an agent, opening my agent window here again, when I go to send a message and use a template, it's going to show me those that have been shared with me by that person. Okay. All righty. So share message templates with agents to allow them to utilize those, be encouraged to use those, and then you can obviously train them to do so and train them where, they at, where they're at. You can create a whole library of messages for them. Alrighty, next is creating shortcuts, another magical area of the system. Let's head over, head over to transactions, run a quick search here. Maybe I want to search for all of the transactions that are pending with a date range of for close date this month, right? Run that search. And then once you've run a search, you've got the ability to return any um, transactions, but that's okay. Once I've run a search, I can add a shortcut for it, right? And my shortcuts, I don't have any, I don't have any created yet. So let's just go ahead and create one. I'm gonna call this one ding, closing this month, right? And I can save that. Um, sure. So these are magical because I can run them with just a single click, let's say from my homepage. I can create a whole library, up to eight, that is, of shortcuts that are, again, just super easy to get to right from my homepage. I can get to them from my transactions page. I can run searches and or sorts from transactions or tasks or unreviewed. So three whole different areas that I can create searches and shortcuts for. And you hear me keep saying searches or sorts. It's not just searches. If I were to, let's say on my transactions page, want to, let's say when I go to my transactions, actually, let me go in as an, as an admin. I'll have more data here. If I, nor, I love my transactions page, it gives me all the information I want, but honestly, I really needed to, need to have it sorted by a close date, right? That's more meaningful to me. I could save that as a shortcut. That way I don't have to keep coming to the transactions page and sorting it each time. I can just run that transaction. Let's call this uh, my transactions sorted with the correct spelling, right? And that way, whenever I log into pipeline, I can just go to my transaction sorted, okay? I switched accounts on you. That's why these got these different shortcuts here. Alrighty. So anyway, super magical, but anyway, agents may be challenged, technically challenged, or just for whatever reason, it would be beneficial to do it on their behalf. So you could log into their account, create those shortcuts, and basically have a nice little custom library of, of ports or links of search results they can get to. Instead of, let's say, coming and asking you regularly, oh, how many transactions, blah, 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 right? You can just create those so that you can outfit them to do it on their own. All righty.
last few areas here um, are ones that we've heard that agents would uh, can occasionally request from um, admins to to do on their behalf. The first is sending docs to clients at closing. We find it beneficial to train agents to send the docs to whoever their client is. I mean, this one that's got a few more docs here by sending it to them as a zip file, right? That's how it's ultimately going to get to them anyway. So if they send a message, they've got the ability to attach the docs. They can attach all the docs. They can attach certain docs or they could, let me undo those. Or they can, if they shift click within a permission category, they wanted to select all the docs within that particular category, they could do that. Again, that's shift click, right? It undoes it as well. So if I hold down my shift key and click any doc within a section, it's going to select all those docs. And then they can mail it to whoever they're going to mail it to. I don't need this template anymore. So I'm going to mail it to whoever. And um, the docs are already checked to be attached. I could add a little note if I wanted to and send that message. Okay. Cool deal. Same general concept for if they come to you wanting a download of the docs um, after close, right? They can just do that same thing, but mail it to themselves, right? They'll be an agent on the transaction, mail it to themselves or type their email address into there. Okay. And while we're on this page, there's two other things here. One is when agents request downloading contacts for a transaction. They've got a few different options or different ways of doing that. One is they can send the cover sheet to themselves. Actually, let me do refresh, reload this page so I get rid of all of that data or all those check marks. So I can send to myself, if I'm Daniel, the transactions cover sheet and just be sure to include the contacts. Okay, that's one way. Another way is they could drag and drop the contacts to a message, right? Remember, you can always drag and drop contacts when you're sharing their information with somebody. Let's say you're sharing an inspector's information with a, a buyer. Or when, again, an agent wants to share their contact, share the uh, contacts information with themselves. So they've got that history, right? You can just drag and drop, send the message to themselves, and they've got that that way. Okay. And the uh, the last way is similar cover sheet to the cover sheet, sending the cover sheet to themselves. And that is they could just open the cover sheet. And then from there, it's bigger, download it. Oh, I'm in a different app here. There's my download. Yeah, I'm going to save that. So those are the different ways of downloading the contacts. And then the last thing I wanted to go over, which agents almost always inevitably ask an admin for, and that is getting a report of their commissions. You need to have the commission module enabled in order to see that. But if you do, if you are subscribed to our commission module, when you go to your personal profile, there will be a your commissions option under here, and they can run their own commissions report. They don't need to come to you to run that. Cool. All right, so that's it for basically different methods of giving your agents additional control and to be more autonomous.